Hi, I'm Leela Kumar. I work as a security services consultant in CA Technologies. My specialization is around CA Control Minder. In today's complex infrastructure and collaborative work style, a lot of stakeholders work on shared resources. Uh, some categories of these shared resources could be configuration files shared by database servers, application servers, and web servers as well. It is highly probable that a database team would modify a configuration file to make sure that particular database job is completed while that might impact the application server team because the application is dependent on certain configurations. It is highly impractical to make sure all these dependencies are drafted and documented for the knowledge of the team. And it is equally dangerous to make sure that to let this happen in a practical environment because even finding the root cause of such defects would be a nightmare. Henceforth, it is essential that we monitor those critical files for any changes and block all further execution of that particular file or that program until a redemption activity has taken place. CA Control Minder offers the facility of monitoring certain programs or files wherein it captures a hash code of the specific executable or binary or script and stores it inside its vault. Now, when any modification has been done to this program and the hash map value gets regenerated because this is a synchronous job that keeps on occurring on a frequent time base and post any changes both intended or unintended the hash value of that particular file is changed and when the control minder endpoint agent compares this hash value with the value it originally stored inside its database when we are protecting this resource for the first time it finds a mismatch and blocks all execution on that particular binary or program until a control activity has taken place. This way, it monitors and ensures that trusted programs are not altered in both intended and unintended ways. This would also uh, bring up a probability where a web server administrator has intentionally changed a configuration file to his requisites. And how do we make sure that this blockage is not going to stop the business process? Now, when these changes are intentional, in other words, when a web service administrator himself is changing the configuration file, post the changes, he can go to the CLang command line or he could define a global policy which will retrust the program and in other words, it would recalculate the hash value and store it in its database. This way, we can make sure that the program is retrusted and all execution of that program or utility is allowed from there on. This is how we make sure that legitimate or intentional changes are carried out without being blocked by the trusted program functionality. Now that you understand how you can protect trusted programs using Selang, let's look at a practical example. You have a Linux endpoint where you have an important program namely the test SU utility. You have to create a Selang policy that will protect the test SU program. You will then modify the test SU program. Since the program is protected by Selang, you will be unable to use the program again. Finally, you have to trust the program again to ensure that it can be executed in future. First, you will see how to create the copy of the SU utility and name a test SU. Let's use the PuTTY utility to log into the Linux endpoint. Enter PuTTY configuration details. Enter host name and select protocol. Log in as root. Enter the password. Then, type cd slash bin to navigate to the bin directory. To create a copy of the SU utility, type this command. It is important that you check if the copy test SU utility is working. To do that, type the following command. To verify that you have assumed the identity of CA user, type who am I. You now know that the test SU utility is working as expected. Finally, close the PuTTY session by typing exit. 
Let's create a Selang policy to protect the test SU utility. To create and deploy the Selang policy, log into CA Control Minder Enterprise Management. First, you need to create a policy, then assign it to a host, and finally check the deployment status of the policy. Let us begin by creating a policy. You can create a policy in Enterprise Management by clicking the Create Policy link. You need to click the OK button to create a new policy. Next, enter the basic policy details like policy name and provide a brief description of the policy. The policy needs to be defined before it is submitted. Click the Policy Script tab to define the policy. The Policy Script tab enables you to enter the deployment and the undeployment script. You can either attach a document containing the commands or type the commands in the dialog box. This command defines a new resource in CA Control Minder for the test SU utility. This command instructs CA Control Minder to trust the test SU utility. With this command, we have given everyone access to execute this utility. In typical enterprise scenarios, you would create an access control list of everyone who can access the file. We have given these flags to ensure all capabilities of the trusted program are utilized. This command ensures the program does not execute when it becomes untrusted. The undeployment script removes the test SU utility as a resource in CA Control Minder. Click the Submit button to create the policy. Look at the confirmation note. The policy is successfully created. Click the OK button to acknowledge that you read the confirmation. We have now created the policy. We can assign the policy to an endpoint by clicking the Assign Policy link. To view the list of policies, click the Ellipses button. From the list, select the Protect a Trusted Program policy. To move to the host selection process, click the Next button. To view the list of available hosts, click the Add button. From the list, select the host onto which you want to deploy the policy. Then, click the Select button. Click the Next button to continue. To deploy the policy, click the Finish button. You have now deployed the policy. Read the confirmation note and click the OK button. Finally, you need to modify the test SU utility and test the working of the Selang script. Let's log into the Linux endpoint and navigate to the bin directory to check if the test SU utility is working. Type test SU CA user. You will be logged in as CA user now. To modify the timestamp associated with test SU utility, type touch test SU. You have modified the test SU utility. It will now be untrusted and will not work until you manually trust the utility. To test if the utility is working, type test SUCA user. You will receive an error message. We will now trust the utility by logging into Selang. Let's navigate to the bin directory for CA Control Minder. Next, open the Selang shell. Let's trust the test SU utility. Let's exit the Selang shell. Finally, let's navigate to the bin directory where the test SU utility is located. To check if the utility is working, type test SU CA user. You are now logged in as CA user. This means that the test SU utility is now trusted and working again. I am sure you now understand how to monitor trusted programs by using Selang policies in CA Control Minder. Thank you for watching this video.